watching BYU TV. The Friday night showcase on BYU TV hits the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah. BYU basketball less than 24 hours ago cleaned up against San Francisco for a win. They cleared the floor and got ready for the home opener of BYU Gymnastics. It's the Utes and Cougars next on BYU TV. Friday night NCAA Gymnastics live on BYU TV. A couple of top 25 programs. The 21st ranked BYU Cougars hosting the 5th ranked Utes of Utah. Welcome inside the Marriott Center everyone wherever and however you're dialed in. Great to have you with us on BYU TV as the Cougars open their home campaign alongside Mikkel Merkley. I am Spencer Linton. Here we are kicking out the 2017 gymnastics campaign for BYU on their home floor. And what a way to do it. Obviously the rivalry factor is always fun. But this Utah team is a national championship contender on an annual basis. We expect no less this year. Yeah, Utah is great, and it's really exciting to have them down here in the Marriott Center. Um, all their crowd is down here. It brings a lot of energy that the both teams can really feed off of. Looking forward to a fantastic atmosphere led by our impact performers tonight. Brought to you by Ahern Rentals, offering commercial and residential high lift equipment with more than 80 locations nationwide. Ahern Rentals since 1953. Watch out for the freshman phenom, Michaela Skinner for the Red Rocks. She was an alternate for Team USA, but it goes way beyond that. Yeah, Michaela's gonna be really fun to watch tonight. She was an alternate on the Olympic team. She just got back from traveling on the visa tour. So she's ready to perform and she's got that mindset. Pac-12 Gymnast of the Week and Freshman of the Week with an incredible performance against Michigan. For BYU, it's another freshman, Michaela Shannon Hortman, that we're watching tonight. Yeah, Shannon's gonna be a standout freshman for the Cougars. She is competing all around, which is incredible for a freshman to do. She has beautiful lines, nice tight form, big skills. She comes with a lot of experience for being a freshman. So we'll expect big things from her tonight. Fantastic stuff as you take a look at Shannon Hortman already garnered some honors from the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference in the past week. The Marriott Center filling up as we speak for one of the more exciting meets of the year, not just in the region, but in the entire country. And let's be honest, anytime Utah is featured, a lot of eyes are going to be watching <laughs> with the history and the prestige that that program brings into a place like this. Our keys to the meet are brought to you by Smith Auto of Spanish Fork. Smith Auto Company, a family tradition since 1924. It's a head-to-head -head competition, yes, but there are so many unique aspects of gymnastics. So really, this applies for both teams tonight, Miguel. Yeah, gymnastics is a little bit different as far as it being head-to-head. -head. Uh, there's no defense, there's only offense, and so both teams will be looking to do hits, which means make their routine, and sticks. When it really comes down to it, those sticks add up. Um, guards looking for an 88% hit rate, at least nine great sticks. And then competing aggressively. This is their first home meet. It's only the second meet total. We're still kind of getting into season, working those nerves out. The girls are looking to compete to win rather than compete not to fail. Guard Young in his second season as the head coach of BYU after coming over from a very successful run with the Oklahoma men's program. Starters on vault for BYU tonight. We'll go Love, then Jill Van Merla will follow her. Zong, Shannon Hortman in the fourth spot. Douglas vaulting fifth, followed by she Cheyenne Hill who will anchor the Cougars in the first rotation. The Utes will start on the uneven bars. Tessin followed by Merrill. Skinner, as we mentioned, one to watch in the three spot. Lewis, Schwab, and Rowe, four, five, six, respectively, on the bars. This Utah team comes into this meet after a very nice start in their opener against number seven Michigan, a head-to-head -head win for the Red Rocks with a score of 196.625. This is also a homecoming of sorts for a few Utah gymnasts competing in Provo. Sophomore McKenna Merrill out of 
Pleasant Grove, and freshman Kim Tesson is from Orem. Both trained at All-American Gymnastics during their club careers. So family, friends, a lot of these gymnasts, for one way or another, know things about each other, if not have personal relationships, and that just factors into the fun that we're expecting tonight. Yeah, I'm excited to watch it. McKenna um, has been really fun to watch. I feel like I've seen her grow up. Her sister was on the BYU gymnastics team with me. And then um, Shannon and Shannon on BYU's team was teammates with McKenna and Kim over at All American. So it's kind of just fun for everyone, kind of like a reunion. Great crowd representing both schools tonight. The Utah Gymnastics Program has a very solid following. They have come out in full force in Provo. Opening vault for BYU, and we're underway. Great start from Lauren. Um, that full was beautiful. The fact that we are opening with a full is a great sign. Form was a little bit loose. You'll see as she comes off the vault, her knees are just a little bit bent. Again, this is very early on in the season. She'll be working out those little uh, mistakes as the season goes on. Lauren Love with a good start for BYU on vault. That takes us to Kim Tesson. And this freshman class for Utah has been rated the third best in the country according to collegegymfans.com. Tesson is a big part of that freshman buzz that Utah brings in. Yeah, she is just beautiful to watch. Beautiful form, tight legs, looking for the good handstands on bars. When they do that pass, we want to see that they're upside down all the way. She has a huge dismount coming up. Gets really high above that bar. Beautiful landing. There is that stick that we were talking about earlier. That is exactly what the coaches will be looking for. Not surprisingly, a big score expected from Tessin after that huge dismount. And let's take a look at the bar change as well. Beautiful handstand there. And then you'll see she goes way above the bar on this dismount. Mm. Judges are looking for that kind of amplitude. Tessin awaits her score back to the vault and BYU. Love pulls in a 9.7 to begin. Jill Van Mierlo, who has battled through some injuries, especially last year, and is ready to go in her junior campaign. Great full, really tight form. That's what we were talking about with that last vault. We're looking for the really tight knees. A little too powerful, probably really excited to be back competing again. Big hop on the landing will be a deduction. We don't want to see those feet move at all. She has a great job controlling it, though. That could have got out of hand. Van Mirlo being congratulated by teammates and her assistant coaches, Natalie Brokman and Brogan Evanson. Tessin with a 9.775 on the uneven bars after that stick. Strong finish. Here is McKenna Merrill. I love McKenna's bar routine. It's a little bit different. She does a trick called a Delchev. You don't see it very often. It's right here. This is her major release. It is gorgeous when it's done properly, and she just does a great job with that. I love watching McKenna. Her form, you'll see everything is just squeezing so, so tight. She has another interesting move here called a stutter. She's looking to do that into her dismount for some bonus points. And again, with those landings, the girls are all doing great tonight. Two bar routines, two sticks for the Utes of Utah. Closer look at our slow-mo cam on that release move. A little close to the bar, that will be a deduction. You want to catch those release moves with totally straight arms. Clutch landing from McKenna Merrill. Jill Van Merlo equals what her teammate Love put up, a 9.7. And that takes us to Angel Zong. Angel's another gymnast with just great lines. Her coaches can't talk enough about how pretty her gymnastics is. All the girls' post lights look really great tonight. They're really pushing off that vault with tight form. Again, just a little bit of nerves, it looks like. Making them a little extra aggressive, giving them a little extra energy on that landing. Zong with the hop. And three vaults successfully completed by BYU. A couple of nine sevens. Zong awaits first score. Merrill takes a 9.75. And that brings us to Michaela Skinner. 
freshman who has earned so much hype and understandably, deservedly so. The routines you'll see tonight from Mikhail will be a little different than those that we watched during the Olympics. Um, in college, you're not rewarded quite as much for difficulty. So these will actually be easier routines for her to throw, which means she can throw them quite perfectly. Very few deductions in that routine. It's another walk in the park for Michaela Skinner. How fun is this? The youths with those landings tonight, they've got to be really proud of themselves. They are not giving anything away that they don't have to. Solid reaction from the coaches and her teammates. On the Red Rock side, Zong 9.65 in college gymnastics. The lowest score in the rotation will be dropped. Blind landing for BYU and Shannon Hortman. Beautiful ball. Shannon does a great job of keeping her hips nice and open in the air. She is not going to let that be counted as a pike no matter what. This is a blind landing, as Spencer mentioned. It's worth a 9.95 start value. Very difficult vault. She performs it very well. Guard Young, double fist pump. He likes what he sees from his freshmen. This is a very young BYU team building for the future. Yeah, I think half the team is freshmen, and they're doing great. I've been really impressed with the freshman squad. Michaela Skinner with a 9.875, which ties Tiffany Lewis, who is about to take the uneven bars for her season best. Tiffany has a huge Tukachev coming up. It's where she goes and flies over that high bar. Right here. Tons of amplitude. Beautiful handstand. You'll see she's getting directly upside down. Again, that's what we'll be looking for. When she does those release moves connected like that, that's bonus. The coaches will be looking for it. Tiffany Lewis. Tiffany has a beautiful beautiful lines on her dismount. Here's that release move again. You'll see just how high she gets, turns it over, reaches for that bar like it's no big deal. You can see there those straight arms that we were talking about earlier. That's exactly how you want to be catching those major release moves. She won the 2016 Coaches Award for Most Improved Gymnast. You saw that stick landing once again, which takes us to Mackenzie Douglas. Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Vault Specialist of the Week. Doug will be our first 10 -0 start value. She's going to do a one and a half twist. Great one and a half. She does it in the tuck position. It's worth the exact same as if her body was totally straight. We are going to start seeing more and more of these one and a halfs and double twists and different varieties of vault as the Yurchenko full was downgraded last year. BYU, I know they have a few girls right now also working the one and a half um, as other teams across the country do as well. Sabrina Schwab after a 9.85 by Lewis. They just keep coming at you from every angle. And we talked about the unique competitive situation involved in gymnastics at the collegiate level. Head to head, not really as important. It's fun to beat your rival, but you compete against yourself. And it's always about qualifying for regionals and having that high score and to be really in the top five, which is right where Utah is. Yeah, Utah's looking really good. Sabrina here has a little bit different routine. Um, she has a lot of difficulty in it. She does a full routine in addition to the her mount. She mounted with skills on the low bar as well, and she just handles it beautifully. It's fun with these um, really good schools coming together to compete. Typically, once judges start handing out big scores, they kind of get in the mood to hand out more big scores. Look at Tom Farden, the assistant coach. You see him there cheering on Sabrina. And the fist pump from Mr. Schwab after a fifth very good routine in this opening rotation for the Utes. It's so great when your first five hit because it takes all the pressure off girl number six. You can just go out and throw it as big as you want because you know you already have those five scores you can rely on. Shannon Hortman with a 9.85 in that four spot for BYU on the vault, followed by a 9.8 from Mackenzie Douglas. Scores improving for BYU 
Douglas with a new season best. And here comes Cheyenne Hill, the anchor vault. Such a great vault from Cheyenne. The Cougars are so excited to have her back in vault lineup. She's been fighting an ankle injury the last several weeks. She's a very strong vaulter. You'll see tight, tight body, good landing. That's pretty incredible considering she really hasn't been able to put in any numbers because of that ankle injury. Relief, excitement for Cheyenne Hill getting back on the vault. In front of the big crowd. Here at the Marriott Center, Schwab 9825. And that ties her season best. Anchor uneven bar performance for Utah will be Bailey Rowe. Has a 995 to her credit in her career. Yeah, Bailey's a great performer. She scores well on every event that she competes. It's because she too just works that form. You can see her toes are squeezing so tight. Usually if your toes are squeezing tight, the rest of your legs are as well. On this dismount, we're gonna be looking for her to keep a totally straight body. Good, just a little bit wiggly in the air. You'll see she goes a little bit piked and then opens. That is a bit of a deduction, but she handles the landing beautifully. Two-time NCAA championships, All-American. Bailey Rowe. They make it look so easy. and the reaction from her teammates. That's probably the best part of college gymnastics is your teammates are just as happy for you when you hit as you are. Exhibition ball for BYU will be Hannah Miller. You get one shot in college gymnastics. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer you work all week. It's not like other sports, you know, you miss a free throw in, bas free throw in basketball, you just try again a few seconds later. That was a huge vault. That's going to give her so much confidence as the exhibition being the first stuck vault for BYU. My guard Young is thinking, why didn't I have her in the rotation? <laughs> wow. And you know, guard does switch up his lineups quite a bit, so it is important for these exhibition spots to hit. He likes to make sure you know that you're always working for a spot. If you're working hard, then you're going to get your chance to compete. So when you hit as an exhibitionist, then it just shows that you deserve to be in that lineup. Hannah Miller, another freshman with that exhibition routine. Take a look at the head coach of Utah, Megan Marsden, who has continued on with just dominant teams and prestige in Salt Lake City. Eighth season with the Utes. BYU and Utah through one rotation. We're happy to be underway in the 2017 gymnastics season. Keep it here on BYU TV. Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Ahern Equipment Rentals. Your next job is our priority. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. And by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. My first memory of BYU, I remember my mom taking me to classes with her and deciding then and there that I was going to be attending BYU as a student someday. Heavenly Father always has more in mind than just diplomas and good grades, and that happened for me with a guy named Cameron. I walked past the BGS posters. The more I walked past it, the more I realized that not only did I need to finish my degree, but I needed to get it from BYU and I could do it from home. Finish at home what you started at BYU, Bachelor of General Studies. No wedding ring tells me you're unmarried, most likely due to the ridiculous cologne you've apparently bathed yourself in. The lack of wear on the right rear pocket of your jeans tells me you don't carry cash when acquire an ATM, but ATMs charge fees. Conclusion, you need someone who offers free ATM access and online banking across the country, even at BYU. So, who should I bank with? Deseret First Credit Union. It's quite simple, really. Game Day Promos helps BYU build the Cougar brand with customized promotional items. Blankets, flashlights, balls, almost anything really. To increase fan loyalty and team support. Businesses can do the same thing. Carefully selecting items that Game Day Promos can customize with any brand. The result? Gifts to reward customers. Licensed promotional product vendor for BYU. Game Day Promos. 
Beyond sports, beyond expectations. I just saw the saddest movie. Oh. <laughs> Although, all the some parts were really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Trick is delving into the world of emotions, oh, <laughs> which can be really uh, hard to shake. <laughs> See, that's why it works. People love magic because deep down, we all want to be tricked. The race is back on. Go! Go right, go right. To find family. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. <laughs> Compete, navigate, go big or go home, right? Run and outsmart the competition to win fifty thousand dollars. Oh my gosh, run! It's season two. Oh my word! BYU Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Smith Auto Company, a family tradition since 1924. Deseret First Credit Union, sharing your values. And by DexterLaw.com for help when you need it most. Our meet summary presented by Deseret First Credit Union. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. The BYU Cougars with an opening rotation score of 48.7. Angel Zong's 965 is the one score that's dropped. Top five are kept and calculated into that total. BYU scored a 194.225 at Penn State in their opening meet. A 48.7 is a very good start as they hope to improve upon the score they put up in meet number one. The Utah Utes, heavy favorites here tonight as the fifth ranked team in America with a 49.125. Merrill's 975 is the low score and not included in that tally. On to rotation two now. The Utes go to the vaults, BYU to the uneven bar, so they switch places. Lee Schwab Lewis, will be one, two, three, followed by Merrill, Tessin in the five spot, and Michaela Skinner. A very exciting vaulter in that sixth and anchor spot. The Cougars, as I just mentioned, on the uneven bars. Natasha Trejo to lead things off, followed by Douglas Hortman. Jill Van Mierlo will compete fourth here. Brittany Haas in the five spot. She's coming off an unforgettable week. Talk about that in just a moment. And Westergaard for BYU is the last to compete on the uneven bars. You may be wondering what the 10 is about on the BYU uniforms. It is about striving for the perfect 10. A constant reminder that the Cougars are chasing down excellence. Earlier this week, Guard Young talked about the opportunity to meet up with Utah and really prove to them and the country that, hey, we're, we're building, we're training, we're young, we've got a long way to go, but at some point, BYU wants to be on this level. That is that is ambitious, yes, but you talk to Guard Young and, and he'll make you a believer. I mean, Guard came from a team, the last team he was coaching was number one. He has no, there's no doubt in his mind that he can make this team, you know, top 10, top five as well. He's done a great job. For Utah to open up the vault, it will be Kari Lee, career best 995. She dropped the 9775 in the opening meet against Michigan. Beautiful vault. Again, lots of hops on vault tonight. I think there's just a lot of energy in here. It's really hard to contain all that excitement and adrenaline. She has beautiful lines. Watch her pushing. Everything's really, really straight. On ball also with these fulls, we're going to be looking that they want to complete the full twist in time to flare their arms out for the landing. Kari did a great job with that. Kari Lee, the sophomore out of Peoria, Arizona. Natasha Trejo to open up the uneven bars rotation for BYU. The coaches just can never say enough good stuff about Natasha. She just works her guts out and is a great leader on the team. She's really working hard this year. This is the same routine she competed as last year. But she's working to just clean it up on this dismount here. We're going to be looking for nice open hips. That's really been her focus in practice this week. Yeah. 
A stick for Natasha Trejo. She did a great job with those open hips on that dismount. You'll see there's no wiggling. Release move from Trejo, five foot sophomore, also out of Arizona. And how about that landing? She knew exactly where that was. Reminder, our score box sponsor tonight, brought to you by Brady Industries, a provider of commercial cleaning supplies and equipment throughout the Western United States for over 65 years. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. Kari Lee, three-time All-American as a freshman, takes a 9.825 to open up the vault for the Utes. Repeating her sophomore year after missing most of last year with an Achilles tear. So good start for Lee, followed by Sabrina Schwab now. Sabrina's are going to compete the tuck one and a half as we saw some of the other gymnasts compete earlier. She a little off on the entry. You'll see she pushes a little harder with one arm. Right here gets just a little off. That one arm gets behind. When you're doing one and a half twists in such a short amount of time, you've got to be square on that vault. 2016 second team All-American Schwab and Trejo with a good 9.7 as she gives way to Mackenzie Douglas. Can send a little short there for Mackenzie. Mackenzie is tall for a gymnast. She's five foot five, which in real life isn't tall, but in gymnastics, if you hit your, if you're a tall gymnast and you're short on those handstands, it really shows. Yeah, we saw it again right there on the second one. <laughs> Douglas. And one more look at her release move. A little bit loose on the catch. Her gymnastics tends to be very big. You'll see how high she goes on this dismount. Everything Mackenzie does tends to be very large. It looks like she was just holding back a little bit tonight, where on vault we saw everyone was going a little more aggressively. On bars, it's easy to pull back when you get nervous. Back-to-back 9.825s -back for the Utes with Lee and Schwab. Tiffany Lewis has the season best of 9.825. Granted, they have only competed in one meet this year, so you have to take all of that relatively. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> I love it when they all run down all excited. This is a great example of finishing the twist very early and having plenty of time to find your landing. You'll see here she gets up, twist, opens up those arms. She can actually see the floor almost half the skill. Lots of time to do the landing. Tiffany Lewis, the pattern of consistency for that Utah team just delivers every time when it comes to hitting a routine. Very rarely does she not do that. Shannon Hortman opened up with a great ball before BYU. Like we talked about earlier, Shannon is a freshman, but she just handles the pressure so beautifully. Really, I love watching guard. Very dynamic gymnastics. She makes sure she gets right to those handstands, right into the next skill. Release. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Her releases are huge. Her on her dismount. Look at that form. Everything's squeezing. Little tiny, tiny bit close, but honestly, not enough for a deduction. That was great. Dismount totally laid out. Solid, solid stick. Guard Young, <laughs> silver medalist with Team USA once upon a time. And he likes this environment. He pointed out specifically this week that when you have a big time opponent, in town it raises the energy level and it makes you compete that much harder that much better your focus is that much more precise it is it's so fun when utah would come here or we would go to utah those used to be my favorite meets merrill for utah answers with a stick of her own same thing same one and a half in that laid out position it's worth a 10-0 start value which is huge in college Nice, nice block. She knows exactly where that landing is as well.
All of these performances carry within them a victory of sorts for these incredibly hardworking athletes. It's really borderline insane how many hours they put in in the gym and what they do to their bodies. All for this, uh, for the enjoyment of the fans here at the Marriott Center. And, for uh, these routines that last about 10 seconds. Yeah, isn't that <laughs> incredible. Jill Van Mierlo now on the uneven bars for BYU. Jill's another gymnast that tends to do everything big, just like Doug, like we saw. We're going to be looking for a lot of height here on that dismount. A lot of power there. You can see why Gart is talking about learning to control the landings a little bit more. We're still very early on in the season. Um, we're still getting used to seeing how adrenaline affects the girls and equipment is different at meets than it is in practice. Bars are a little bouncier, harder. It takes a little bit of time during the season to get used to the, making those adjustments. Van Merrill getting a hug from Trey Ho. Merrill with a 9.9. .9. That's a career best. And well deserved, it was beautiful. Kenna Merrill. Kim's gonna be looking to control her landing a little bit better this week than last week. She does the same ball as McKenna. Big step from Tessin. You can see she's a powerful vaulter. Vault is one of her favorite events, and you can tell she just really gets into it. As their season goes on as well, she will learn to control those landings with adrenaline. She is a freshman. She still has a little bit more experience to gain in the college setting. Tessin, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the homecoming of sorts out of Orem, Utah, member of All-American Gymnastics in that club, and Mountain View High School. Now to Brittany Haas, who is the bar specialist of the week in the Mountain View Gymnastics Conference after a career best 9.9. .9. This is the only event Brittany competes on. Yeah. Talk about injuries. She's had 13 surgeries and three surgeries for an ACL in the same knee. Incredible resilience. Yeah, her poor knee's just done, and bars is kind of all it can handle now, but she handles bars like nobody's business. Look at that body position on that dismount. It is just totally locked out. Everything that she does is just so tight. Brittany Haas. You're gonna look, her body is so open on that. It's very hard to do that, Ginger, with a totally open body with that technique. And then here, not one ounce of wiggling in the air. Oh. She piked down just a tiny, tiny bit at the end, which is what led to that slight over rotation. I'm sure as season goes on again, she'll learn to just find that landing a little more. And she's, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a 10 0 from her this season. Tessin takes a 9.7. That will likely be the drop score for the Utes as we watch Michaela Skinner. Michaela is competing the most difficult vault tonight of everyone with the double twisting Yurchenko. A little bit of a step there on the landing. That is a hard vault. She makes it look very easy, so it's a little bit deceiving, but that's very impressive. So much happening in such a short amount of time. The step, yes, but impressive no less. Haas with a 9.775. She came in to Studio B and talked to us on BYU Sports Nation, and we asked her what's more nerve-wracking, competing in front of thousands of people on TV and in the stands or being on this show. And she said, oh, it's, it's <laughs> doing this interview for sure. Yeah, these guys have done at least a 1,000 of each of their routines at this point. So this is just another day of gymnastics. That probably was scary. Jessie does a great job connecting that major release move on the high bar to her transitional release move going from high bar to low bar. That is bonus. Big double front there. That is a very difficult dismount. I believe it's an E. The skills are rated A to E based on difficulty level, so that's at the highest difficulty level. There's that bird's eye view of the release move again. Bar change and Jessie Westergaard. That double front. Guard has specifically put her at the end because he knows if she hits that double front that she's going to score well. All the placement of these girls are very calculated as far as 
the coaches want the scores to build. If one girl, if the first girl does well and the next girl does just as well, then they need to receive a score just as good or higher. So hopefully the scores build as lineup builds. Missy Ryan Statler with an exhibition vault. Another very open layout, tons of time to see the floor. Just a little bit of a step, a little too much adrenaline there on the landing. Applause from the Utah coaches for their performance after wrapping up the vault and an exhibition routine back on the bars now for BYU. Kind of a fun move there, the toe on into the half. That is all bonus, how she connects that. Again, we're looking for that on bars. We're looking for handstands, skills connected into one another. The more skills you connect, the more bonus you get, but it is also a lot harder. And sounds a little short tonight. Mario Mitchell. Great landing. I just love it when he's so excited. Richard freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. As a freshman, this is a very, very intimidating opening home meet. Everyone there is from your dorms. The crowds are so full. She handled the pressure beautifully of getting in and just doing that routine. Two rotations down in the annual Deseret Duel meet between BYU and Utah. The Red Rocks, number five in the country after a season opening win against seventh ranked Michigan. BYU, the 21st ranked team in the country, finished second at Penn State in that quad meet. Third rotation coming up. Utah heads to the floor. BYU to the always challenging balance beam. NCAA Gymnastics continues next on BYU TV. My grandfather started the company in 1947. My father took over in the mid 70s and now 10 locations in six states. My grandpa having grown up in Utah, it's a great feeling to be back where it all started. While we've been fortunate enough to expand over the years, every position in our company recognizes their contribution and people who do business with us are able to see that character that was instilled by my grandfather over 70 years ago. Home security shouldn't stop at the front door. And with live video monitoring from Xfinity Home, watch what's happening at home from anywhere. Xfinity Home. Connected. Protected. Home. I'm attorney Chris Dexter at Dexter Law. We provide a variety of legal services and are passionate about supporting Cougar sports on BYU TV. Learn more at DexterLaw.com and go Cougars! Thank you, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. With the generous support of the Cougar Club, BYU 623 student athletes are role models, leaders, graduates, and champions. Welcome, welcome to, to the, the club. club. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Help them succeed with your donation, and welcome to the club. Lou runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU San Diego women's basketball game. Live tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 12 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar sports. Before the crowds arrive, before the lights switch on, and we step out to battle, we power through through the doubts, the excuses, and the expected limitations. It's when the game's about to begin that we flip the switch. Because nothing, no force, fear, or failure can keep us in the dark. on BYU TV is brought to you by Ahern Equipment Rentals. Your next job is our priority. Brady Industries, clean solutions, a tradition for generations. 
and by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah, NCAA Gymnastics at the midway point of the meet. Our BYU Sports History Showcase brought to you by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. And let's take a look at BYU Gymnastics year in review. The Cougars qualified for a seventh consecutive regional after a third place finish in the Mountain Room Gymnastics Conference. Mackenzie Halliday, runaway MRGC Gymnast of the Year. She graduated. It was hard for Guard Young to watch her go. She was uh, the consistent hit and stick gymnast for BYU last year. Yeah, Guard actually talked about losing Mackenzie, losing Emily, those solid hitters. The girls had really big shoes to fill, and they're doing a great job so far. We've seen a lot of the freshmen now coming into this BYU program performing well in their home opening meet. The Utes with a huge score on vault, 49.3. Tessens 9-7 is the score dropped after Michaela Skinner with that very difficult combination. Yeah, those ends two, with a 9.9. .9. Yeah, those two 9-9s look great up there. Wow, Merrill and Skinner. And the bar score for BYU, a 48.875, respectable for sure. Trejo's 9.7 is dropped now technically you could drop the 9.7 from douglas too correct yeah they don't no one really cares about like who scored what they're just going to add those up at the end of the day updated score through two rotations the utes heavy favorites in this head-to-head -head meet 98.425 scoring a 49 on each rotation is really bare minimum for what they expect to do yes BYU with a 97.575 on pace to take a good step in the right direction after their opening meet. Yeah, Guard it would have been looking for a little bit better performances from some of his bar girls. They did score the 49 last week. I'm sure they're just going to keep practicing those hits and sticks like he talks about all the time in practice. Beam rotation, Harward, Miller, Trejo, Zong, Shannon Hortman, and Jill Van Mierlo gets that trusted sixth position on the balance beam. The Utes over to the floor. Rowe will lead things off, followed by Lewis, Roberts, Merrill, who had a huge vault with a 9.9, .9. Sabrina Schwab in the five spot, and Michaela Skinner to close things out on floor. Plenty of fans representing both sides here tonight in the Marriott Center. Utes and Cougars. I always really liked it when the Utes fans come down here. They're very, I feel like a lot of times in normal sports, you know, football, basketball, it gets a little rowdy. But in gymnastics, all the fans seem to be pretty respectable and they cheer everyone on and it just brings such a fun atmosphere to the building. Yeah, respectful is the right word and dedicated is another word you can use to yes. explain the Utah gymnastics fan base. And they drew a crowd of almost 15,000 last week uh, in that opener against Michigan. Sellouts are not uncommon at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. And that takes us to BYU and the balance beam. Taylor Harward opening things up. Taylor Harward is just a very solid, consistent competitor. She brings the senior steadiness to a lineup that this young team can really benefit from. You see, she just really takes her time. That beam is only four inches wide. So if you're nervous at all and you let yourself get a little wiggly, it's really easy to fall off really fast. Harwood is the only senior on this roster. And she holds on. That was a great save. It's really easy. As again, we're very early in the season. Nerves are an issue, tend to, tend to be an issue early on in the season. She kept her cool when she was off a little to the side and just pulled it right back on. This is that steadiness that her coaches talked about. You can see her just really taking her time on each of her skills. And the fall.
Taylor's job now is to continue as if she didn't fall because we don't know what the next five competitors are going to do. Ideally, they'll be able to drop this routine, not count this score, but if someone else falls, then great landing. Then we may have to count this one after all. So the pressure mounts for all of the competitors following Taylor Harwood on the balance beam, knowing that they can ill afford another fall. They do have the luxury of dropping the low score. Harward successful in those first two acro series, had to hold on really hard here. Yeah, you can see her little toes just gripping that beam. She does a good job. And then just a little too far back there. It almost looked like she wasn't set when she started to take that last jump. Like yeah, she, she was in a little bit of a hurry. She didn't quite turn, her hips and her shoulders so didn't so quite turn forward. together. Forward. And when, again, that beam is only four inches wide, if you're off even a little bit, it's so hard to pull it back on. Yeah, I'm not about to, crit about to criticize. <laughs> <laughs> the flipping on the, the skinny athletes and what they have to four. do on a four inch wide <laughs> balance beam, four feet in the air. Utah on the floor. Baby Huge. row. Huge double pike. Utah has insane difficulty on floor. Most of their girls are going to do some kind of full in, some kind of big E level tumbling pass. Again, like we talked about earlier, the skills are rated A to E. A being the easiest skill, E being the most difficult. On floor, you're required to do two Ds or one E. Utah opts to do at least one E for most of their routines. Row team co-captain with her second pass. Oh shoot, that's the worst when that happens on either your first or second pass because you have to get up and just keep going as if it didn't even happen. We'll take a closer look at what happened on that second pass in just a moment. But as you mentioned, yeah, the challenge now is for Roe to finish strong. She's a very strong twister. We'll see she does another twisting pass here. Great recovery. First pass for Bailey Roll was very dynamic. We'll see lots of height here. Solid landing. In, in college gymnastics, you are allowed to take one step back, but it's very impressive when you don't have to. We see she just over rotates that. She doesn't quite know where the floor is. It looked like she wasn't expecting to be as high as she was. She thought she needed to get those feet under her a little more. Taylor Harvard with a 9.1 after that fall on the beam. Well, we've seen the first two real critical mistakes of this meet in back-to-back -back performances, one from Harvard and one from Bailey Rowe, uncharacteristic for sure. Hannah Miller on balance beam now for BYU. Hannah actually changed her routine on Monday. This is a new routine for her. Beam is her favorite, so she can kind of just go with the flow on it. They found that typically, if you connect more skills together, you get more bonus. But after going through her routine, they learned that if she actually broke up a few skills and did them in a different set, then she received more bonus that way. In gymnastics, a lot of times we talk about how the routines start from a 10-0. They actually start from a 9-5, and the gymnasts have to earn the extra five tenths in bonus points. So when we talk about the gymnasts doing their connections or their big skills for bonus, that's what we're talking about, trying to earn that extra five tenths. Hannah Miller, the Acro Series. And a very good dismount with a stick. Hannah kind of did a great job. It's hard following a fall. You know that your team is relying on you to get back on track and get that momentum to start building again. That was a great routine for her. Confidence builder for Hannah and for that BYU team. As the BYU chance start in Marion Center, Bailey Rowe scores a 9.3. And the opening floor routine for the Red Rocks, Tiffany Lewis. Pac-12 floor champion. She didn't have a great week in this event last uh, against Michigan. Yeah, she actually fell on her final pass. We'll be looking for 
They stick for sure, especially after falling that fall. They really don't have the privilege of letting anyone else fall. There's that full in we're talking about. That is an E-level skill, a little bit short on the landing. Looks like we're having just a little bit of a hard time finding, figuring out this floor, how it bounces. That was a great pass. On floor, we will be looking for not only the tumbling passes, but leaps and jumps are worth quite a bit and our requirement. You'll see here how she does that lead pass connected. They do have to compete a pass where they hit a full 180 degree split. She chose to do that in the side split. Other gymnasts will choose to do that, just a regular forward split. Here's that pass that she, she was un, under rotated a little bit last week, landed really short. Lewis. Knew, comes up big. Knew exactly where she was this week. Bounce back routine for Tiffany Lewis after that fall last week. And one more look at the first pass. Yeah, you see she just doesn't quite stand up enough into that full in, making it land a little short. She makes up for it with the last two passes. Great landings on those. Yeah, I'd say she exercised the demons of a week ago. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Expecting a solid score. <laughs> Tiffany Lewis, <laughs> Natasha Trejo on beam for BYU following Hannah Miller's 9.65. Natasha switched up her routine a little bit this year compared to last year. She has two series that she could do. She's very good on beam. They decided to go with the front back series. Normally we, for a series pass, we see a flick lay in called gymnastics. She's going to do a front move connected to a back move. There that is. Um, so she will not be, she made it. She has the flick lay if she doesn't connect that just as a backup, but because she did, she doesn't have to. It's great to have gymnasts with that kind of versatility in their routines. A little bit of a wobble there. That's a hard skill you'll see called the ring jump. Um, it's a D because when they flip their head back, they lose sight of that beam and it can make you a little dizzy and it's kind of scary not knowing where the beam is. Great landing. Trejo delivers a second consecutive performance for BYU without a fall after that opening drop off from Taylor Harward. She had to hold on for a moment, too, right here. Yeah, you see she's just a tiny bit off and where she does do that skill, where she throws her head back. Sometimes you don't know you're quite off as much as you are until you hit the beam and you're on the side of it. So she did a great job saving it. Lewis with a 9.775 on the floor. That's a new season best for Next Tiffany. Which takes us to Macy Roberts, who scored a 9.85 in her season opening floor routine against the Wolverines of Michigan. Macy has a really fun routine to watch. She has a lot of unusual crowd pleasing type dance elements in it. Usually, once you're confident enough in your tumbling, as these girls are, gorgeous then you can add in the fun stuff that just shows off how fun college gymnastics really is. Second pass.
When the girls do a one and a half twist instead of a full twist, it's called a Rudy. And it is worth a little bit more than the full. So it's great to see that connected to the front lay. slower dancer she prepares for her final pass these routines are not very long but they are jam-packed and exhausting a lot of times the gymnast will take a second to take a breath before that final pass loud ovation for macy roberts from an appreciative crowd at the marriott center first pass right there really saw landing if the uh, for anyone watching this and wondering, can they do that step back in the Olympics? I know we watched that this summer. The rules are different than during the Olympics. You cannot take a step back. In college gymnastics, you can. It looks really impressive if you can do it without the step, but there's no deduction for that lunge. However, if you do take two steps, then it is a fault. Macy Roberts awaiting her score as she receives construction from her coaches. Natasha Trejo ties the 9.725 she put up in the quad meet at Penn State last week. And here is Angel Zong. Like Natasha, Angel has a little bit different series. And the second fall. So BYU gonna be penalized significantly on the beam. Angel is a freshman. She's still working on adapting to that competitive college setting. In club gymnastics, where all these freshmen are coming from, you don't compete by yourself. It's similar to a track me. Everyone's competing at the same time. And then suddenly you get to college, and all the eyes are on you. It can be very intimidating. It takes a little bit of adjusting, too. Zong holds on right there. Freshman out of Langley, British Columbia. Great side aerial there. The girls are required to do back moves and then either a front or side move on the beam to show versatility um, in their acro moves. Dismount for Zong. And let's take a look at what went wrong right here. Kind of hard to tell from this angle. It looks like she just split a little bit late and possibly threw her shoulders to the side. Here's that side move we talked about that is required. Very solid, no deductions on that. You can see Natalie and the other coaches are so great. When the girls fall, like, you already feel pretty bad about letting the team down. You'll see that as the girls go talk to the coaches afterward. They're usually giving them a few corrections and really just building them up because they still have another rotation left. They have to pull it back together. Macy Roberts scores a 9.825 on the floor exercise. And now we'll watch her teammate, McKenna Merrill. McKenna is beautiful to watch. She has such artistry, but she's also so powerful, which is sometimes hard to come across. Hiked, full in, very difficult. You'll see she lands on that sting mat. That's not a deduction to have a mat on the floor. Season is long. These girls aren't 16 anymore. Their bodies can't take a lot of hard landings over and over. So the coaches are very smart in allowing them to have a little mat on the floor to just protect their joints a little bit. She averaged a 9-9 as a freshman in this event. Beautiful. A back two and a half is a very hard pass in itself. To add the front flip out of it shows amazing control. She has a great set. She really flips it well. McKenna has actually grown two inches since the start of her freshman year. As a regular, and again in regular sports, that can be a benefit, and gymnastics is really hard. All the, the more impressive if you can keep those lines straight with that added length. Yes, the longer something is, anyone who knows anything about physics, 
the longer something is, the harder it is to flip. So she's done a great job adjusting to that throughout the season. Merrill gets standing ovation from a few hundred Utah fans. Well, what's not to like about that routine? Last pass. Again, that two and a half is a hard pass without the front flip. So the fact that she's sticking the front flip after it is very impressive. Zong with an 8.625. That score most likely will be the one dropped. So Harvard's 9.1 will count. And now the pressure falls on freshman Shannon Portman, who just so happens to be the conference beam specialist of the week. And that is a, that is a lot of pressure to put on anyone, let alone a freshman. But her beam coach has just talked about how great she is under pressure, how even though she is a freshman, she comes very experienced for her several years competing level 10 prior to this. Shannon tends to move very quickly on beam, so her focus this week is to just stay calm, breathe throughout her skills, take her time. Body language exudes confidence. It's hard not to get sped up in this environment. It is, there's the adrenaline and also when you know they're counting on you, you kind of just want to get it done and get off without making mistakes. But if you can just take your time, get your pacing on track, you're going to do a lot better. Not quite sure she'll get the connection for that. That's a hard pass, that kick over front, that is her front move. She's been solid so far. I don't think we've really seen any wobbles. What a start for Shannon Holtman to her home career at BYU. You can see exactly why, even though she is a freshman, she's so far back in the lineup. Very dependable, very pretty gymnastics, very consistent. Blind landing after the front flip and the dismount. Chest a little bit low on that dismount. That will be a deduction. She had a few just you know, that low chest, the lack of connection. But other than that, that was a very good routine, especially considering the pressure that she was under for that. Sabrina Schwab has posted a career best of 9.95 on the floor. Pretty music. College is kind of fun because it allows you to show off more of your personality. Some of the girls go for more upbeat songs. Some of the girls have a lot of ballet and dance training and they prefer to show off that part of their training. It's very individualized in that way. Sabrina competed in her first career all around last week against Michigan, scoring a 39.975. allowed to do that little dance move out. You'll notice a lot of the Utah girls, they either do a jump or a dance move out of one of their passes. You're allowed to do it out of one pass. Um, it adds that bonus if you add a difficult jump out, but also sometimes it's easier to stick. It's a very intentional move on Utah's part when they're doing their choreography. You can hear vocals in Sabrina's routine, which normally you don't. Lyrics are not allowed in college gymnastics on floor, but where it has more of an instrumental feel to it, there's no words, she can use that without any kind of deduction. Last. Replay of the second pass now from Sabrina. Here's that dance move. Sometimes it's easier to control it if you're planning on taking a step like she does. Representing Lucas, Texas. 
last week she actually went out of bounds on that final pass so you could see she really made the she did not even come close to that corner she was not about to make that mistake again Horton scores a 9.625 and here comes Jill Van Mierlo Jill is doing the same routine as she did last year for the part of the season she was able to compete before getting hurt. And it's just focusing on making all of her moves really big, really dynamic. She's been looking really consistent in practice. Great start. It's such a good feeling when you just nail that first move. Kind of helps get rid of the nerves a little bit. Last week, Jill was not given credit for her leap pass here. They said it wasn't connecting enough. There's no possible way that could not be counted as a connection. I know she's been working that really hard this week, not allowing any room for error on that. All the Cougars side aerials are very consistent. They have a great look to them. They have a nice lift. They're very over the beam, which is exactly where you want to be. Jill Van Milo. Beautiful landing. Look at that opening aerial series, and you're right, she nailed it. is exactly what he's guard's been looking for. Hard to ask for more than that from the junior Jill Van Mierlo. Sabrina Schwab scores a 9.9, .9, which is the score that Michaela Skinner put up in her first meet for the Utes. Again, those of you who watched Michaela at the Olympic trials, this will be a very different routine than what you're used to seeing her do. A little bit easier, which is great because it allows her to hit it more flawlessly. And college routines are just more fun. They're more for the crowd. They don't have to be quite so stuffy as elite routines have to be. was waiting for the, you to use that word stuffy. <laughs> they are, they're a little bit, uh, it's the best word I can think of for them. <laughs> not, just not as fun as college. Oh, she makes gymnastics enjoyable to watch. Everything she does looks so easy. Her difficulty level is unmatched. The fact that she is doing a double-double for her first pass, she ends with a full in, which is what the most advanced gymnasts in the nation are starting with. This is another pass that's more of the elite style, that back one and a half into more twisting. Very impressive. Again, here's that full in. She should be really, really tired at this point, and instead she's gonna do a giant tumbling pass. No one ends with that. That is a very hard pass to start your routine with. Great, great set. Well-deserved applause from all in attendance. One of the loudest cheers of the night. That was incredible. It really was. You can see that is just so much flipping and twisting in just one little pass. Here's that one and a half into the double twist. Again, you don't see that a lot in college, but I mean, she's been training that pass. It's probably pretty easy for her to just stick in there. Great set. There She'll are, be well, well rewarded for that. There are a lot of cliches in sports broadcasting and in the English language when it comes to sports, but I'm gonna use one here because I mean it. <laughs> she is absolutely worth the price of admission. <laughs> so talented. Michaela Skinner, just a freshman for the Utes. Exhibition routine on the beam for BYU. Good start for Macy. 
everything that Macy does on the beam looks so great. She is working a brand new dismount, which is one of the reasons she's in the exhibition spot. Working to get a little more consistent on that, and this is a great place to gain that experience. For those of you who don't understand what an exhibition is, top six gymnasts compete. Number seven, they just get to kind of show what they've been working. Um, it's really great for them to practice competing in front of a crowd and being the only one up there and learning how they handle their nerves. It's also a great opportunity for the coaches to see how they are judged, if they uh, have all their elements or if there's something that needs changed before they're put in the actual lineup for a spot that's going to count toward the team score. There's that new dismount we talked about. Great landing, a little bit of the bent knees on the form, a little more practice, and she'll be able to get that really, really tight. Macy Miller with the exhibition routine, which takes us to an exhibition performance on the floor for the Utes. And for those wondering, Michaela Skinner's score, a 9.95. Huge score. Missy has a different mount. We've been seeing a lot of double backs, a lot of full ins. Missy mounts with something called a double Arabian. It starts backwards like a double back, but instead turns at the very beginning and ends up being a double front. Blind landing, very hard. Again, one of those E skills that the Utes are showing off tonight. Two time Junior Olympic national oh, champion. That was not a double Arabian. <laughs> Beautiful leap pass. You see, they're very dynamic. She does a great job of really snapping those legs up together. You can see she's another one of those gymnasts that has a dance move choreographed right out of the second pass. Again, ideally to eliminate deductions where she did have that bobble on the landing. It was more just to show off dance at that point. She's a very graceful dancer. You see Ryan Statler. Some confidence building for the 5'4 freshman out of New Jersey. That concludes the third rotation between BYU and Utah. The Utes with a huge score on the floor. Not surprising, they will tally all of that and give you the updated scores when we come back. NCAA Gymnastics, a top 25 matchup of rivals continues next on BYU TV. Good morning, Mrs. Kessler. That's good. Ready, right. You need a break. <laughs> oh! The problem is Jake's phone. What? There is a place where the desert comes alive, where rain breaks forth from solid stone and gardens spring from blistered rock. There is a place with enough color to make a rainbow jealous, where boulders are bigger than buildings and cliffs are higher than clouds. There is a place that will straighten your step, tighten your grip, widen your eyes, and open your jaw. There is a place. It was there for you over a thousand times yesterday. It was there for you today and it will be there tomorrow. As long as you're making memories, it will be here to save them for you. It's what we do. We create the technology that saves your memories. I am Flash, connecting people through memory. Lou runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU McKendree men's volleyball game. Live tomorrow at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. 
Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar Sports. Every time I go on a road trip, I don't know, I get this weird feeling that Brian's enjoying my spot way too much. Pre-game warm-up. Heavy, that's heavy, that's heavy. Am I worried? Wait, where is Brian? I, I gotta go. Ah! Gonna put Logan on the air! Open the door! Welcome to BYU Sports Nation. With Brian Logan. Gymnastics on BYU TV is brought to you by Smith Auto Company, a family tradition since 1924. Deseret First Credit Union, sharing your values. And by DexterLaw.com for help when you need it most. A reminder, our next broadcast on BYU TV, tomorrow, 2 Eastern, high noon, tip-off, right here in the Marriott Center. So, yeah. Not much rest for the crews here. Clean up the gymnastics meet. Get ready for women's college basketball tomorrow. San Diego paying a visit to BYU as the Cougars look to bounce back after a disappointing road loss against San Francisco. Our game summary, or I should say meet summary, presented by Deseret First Credit Union. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future. We have tallied the scores after three rotations. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first, the beam score from BYU, a disappointing 47.875. Let's call it what it is after the two falls for the Cougars. Harvard's 9.1 is counted because of that, and so BYU coming in lower than Coach Card Young obviously would have liked. Especially after hitting, not having to count any falls in their opening meet, that's doubly disappointing for the team. It's a little difficult to come back and still have to perform well on your next event. Look at Utah, despite the fall by Bailey Rowe, they dropped the 9.3. Everybody else delivered, including Michaela Skinner's 9.95, a new career best for a 49.275. A huge score for the Utes on floor, and that takes them to a total of 147.7. BYU at 145.45, so the Cougars really need a strong showing on floor. They're hoping for their first rotation of 49 to give them a better score than they posted last week. It's always about improvement. Utah the same way. They're going to want to see improvement from that opening meet against Michigan. On the beam for the Red Rocks, Merrill will lead things off. Sabrina Schwab second. Michaela Skinner will compete third in this event. Stover, Lee, and Bailey Rowe is the anchor on beam for Utah. BYU, as I mentioned, heads to the floor. The rotation for the Cougars on your screen now. Jill Van Mierlo in the opening spot. Pearson making her home debut in 2017 second. Natasha Trejo followed by Hortman. Mackenzie Douglas, who is always entertaining to watch on the floor. She's a high flyer. And Hilton, the last to compete for the Cougars in this meet tonight. So the Utes at 147.7. And to remind you what they put up last week against Michigan, a 196.625. So they are pacing for a very good score tonight. McKenna Merrill opens up the final rotation on beam. McKenna has just really blossomed, blossomed as a college gymnast this year. She is not only doing all around, but she's just performing and thriving and they are depending on her every meet for high high scores in that all-around position trying to improve upon a 98.25 9.825 i should say mckenna has a lot of difficulty in her routine as we'll see she has a three-part series where she goes flick flick lay the three skills. It's just one more skill that you could possibly go crooked on. Triple Aqua series. 
Nicely done. McKenna also has two, she, in the past she's done two front moves, front and side moves. Only one is required. That is a blind landing. And it's on one foot, which makes it even harder. If you're off a little bit, you don't have that second foot to save you. Really intense dance, I like it. Very sharp, very dynamic. There's that front, that second blind landing front move that she has. Tiny, tiny bit short on the landing leading to that step. She just didn't quite get turned over out of the round off. Oh, other than that though, really not much to deduct in that routine. Kenna Merrill. Just as impressive with our slow-mo cam. She has such pretty form. Usually gymnasts are not super excited about being in slow-mo um, on their leaps and jumps because you can see their knees bending. Nothing for her. Through one week, she posted a top 10 score in the all-around with a 39.425 against Michigan. She figures to factor into the all-around competition all year long. As we look at Jill Van Mierlo. This is my husband's favorite routine. He feels like anytime you can combine football with gymnastics, it just makes gymnastics that much better. I second that. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of dads out there that have been to level five meets that could agree. This is the <laughs> Fox NFL theme that you're hearing. <laughs> See, this is on the quick playlist for me. <laughs> Jill has been preparing all week to be in this opening spot. She has a routine with a lot of energy. She could compete later on in the lineup because she's consistent and has a lot of difficulty, but the coaches want the girls starting off with a nice big routine. They want the momentum to start right away. There is a little bit of pressure being that opening spot. The girls are relying on you to hit. You don't have quite as much warm up time because you have to rest before. You don't get to rest while your teammates are competing. So you have to be able to warm up quickly as well. You can see Jill's just such a great performer. She's probably been waiting for this moment a long time. Hurt quite a bit last season. She's been working really hard with the trainers this season to keep those injuries at bay. Great opening set for BYU. Jill Van Mierlo. Well, she's having a night for BYU. Again, we see that mat out on the floor. That's not a deduction. That is to protect her ankle that was injured all last season and kept her out. Coaches are trying to be really smart about just keeping the girls healthy. Season's long. We want to see them all season, not burn them out a few weeks in. Merrill scores a 9-7-7-5 to begin for Utah on the beam. Sabrina Schwab in the number two spot in the final rotation. Sabrina has such a fun mount kind of old school. We don't see presses a lot anymore. They're very hard. I love that she does it and then adds that little modern leg twist. It's just fun to see different things in the choreography. Like we talked about with McKenna, we could put her on slow motion and you would not see any knee bend at all on her leaps and jumps. Great extension. Now, slow motion is not flattering to many people. No, it's really, really not. <laughs> but the gymnasts, they can do very little wrong on these, in these different events and on this particular apparatus makes you really appreciate uh, the hard work that they put in and what they do. Sabrina. 
showing great precision thus far. The hits are doing a great job. We talked about pacing earlier, taking it one skill at a time, taking your time on being. They really take their time. They show that they're not in a rush. They're just gonna do their skills one at a time. Let's take another look at that mount, which quite honestly had me speechless. Yeah, very impressive to be able to, like, to balance like that. And you see how she's leaning over. Your shoulders will light on fire if you just go home and try that. It's very, very hard. Please, nobody try that at home. Please. <laughs> that's a disclaimer. Spencer has to say that for <laughs> Just, legal reasons now. That cannot end well. Here is the dismount from Sabrina Schwab. Jill Van Mierlo with an impressive floor routine, 975 to open up. That bests her opener at Penn State. And here is Brianna Pearson. Despite her freshman status, Coach Brogan has just talked about how exceedingly consistent Brianna is. Her coaches and teammates just really know that she's going to hit every pass tonight. It's so nice when your teammates have that confidence in you because sometimes that helps you have the confidence in yourself. Brianna's working really, really hard on her form. She does some warm-up exercises. The warmer she is, the better her form tends to be. So we'll be looking for that throughout the season from her just getting tighter and tighter. So far, so good for Brianna Pearson. Jazz, always good for the crowd, and Pearson here's lining that, up for her final pass. Yeah, here's that slower dance we talked about. These routines, they're only a minute and a half, but they are an intense minute and a half. So a lot of times we like to take it a little slower, get your breath back before that final tumbling pass. Great landings. That second pass should even take a step, which we talked about earlier, very impressive to do. That last pass, very, very controlled. This is exactly what the coaches were looking for from her. Brianna Pearson, another freshman stepping up for BYU. BYU, BYU. You see the confidence growing as her routine progressed. There's Second that pass solid, yeah, that very solid, nice. solid landing. Brianna Pearson is going to pull in a nice score here in that number two spot on the floor for BYU. 975 for Sabrina Schwab, which takes us to Michaela Skinner. Put up a 985 last week and is coming off a floor routine of 9.95, which is a career best for her. Beam is kind of hard to follow when you have something really exciting like that happen because Beam is more of a quiet. Determination, you can't be really pumped up, you can't be hyped. It's a really easy way to fall off. So she's gonna have to, yeah, moving a little bit fast. She'll wanna slow down just a little bit. She does a fan turn. Most of the girls, a turn, a toe turn is required on beam. Usually it's something you kind of just want to get out of the way. She takes the opportunity to really show how strong she is and use that for one of her bonus moves. She has such a beautiful back tuck. A lot of times on beam, we'll see the girls land with their chest a little bit low. Her chest, when her feet hit, her shoulders are up. That's exactly what the judges will be looking for on that to not receive a deduction. She has a huge dismount. We never see this in college. The double back. It's a very difficult pass as far as safety goes. You're doing a double back off something that's four inches, but it's also very difficult to stick to make perfectly. 
Great opening series. You'll see she's just a smidge off. You can tell in slow motion, but in real time, she does such a great job covering it. She won't receive any kind of deduction for that. Oh, she is something. You choose the adjective to explain Michaela Skinner and what she brings to Utah board, gymnastics as a freshman. Nine seven for Brianna Pearson. Followed up that 9.75 from Van Mirlo, and here we go with Natasha Trejo. BYU off to a good start on the floor. Coach Brogan redid everyone's floor routines this year, and she was so excited about Natasha's. If you listen carefully to the music later on, you'll realize it's from Frozen. Brogan feels like Natasha is just a real life Disney princess. She's just a great person. She always gives it all. She works hard, she's happy. She's the perfect representation of what a BYU athlete should represent. a little bit low on that fan turn. It will be a deduction. Again, when we do those fan turns, you have a lot of confidence in your turning ability. It shows that that's one of her strengths. It's a lot easier just do a regular toe turn and get it out of the way. Final pass, Trejo. Natasha Trejo. Really great routine. She's coming back from an injury this year and she has just had an eye single to the target. She's just worked her guts out and has been a great example for the team. And you can tell those passes are not easy. They're not just throwing her in. She really worked hard to perfect them and be a great example on the team. Barry is doing great on floor. Really coming back after that beam, having to count that beam fall. Score now from Kayla Skinner on beam 9.875. She will continue to break career bests week in and week out, and does so here. Maddie Stover, competitor number four on the balance beam for the Red Rocks. Fifth ranked team in the country. BYU at number 21. Maddie has another one of those front back series that we'll be looking for. They're a little bit harder to connect. They don't quite have the flow. That uh, flick, a flick lay, you're going to connect that. But the front aerial back handspring series, they require a little more discipline in making sure that you make it really smooth. Maddie does a skill called a ring jump right there. Again, when you throw that head back, it increases the difficulty level of it. it makes it very hard to land. Those are very hard moves. Maddie Stover, stick landing. Here's that series again, you'll see Unlike the back handspring back layout where it's all just going one direction, very natural to keep it moving. The girls that choose to do these front back series connections, they have to make sure that front arrow is really on because that's difficult. If you're even a little off, it's hard to make that connection possible. Another look at that dismount. And Stover awaits her score. Trejo puts in a 9.7 an improvement upon her performance last week. Shannon Hortman with that same 9.7 score a week ago. Shannon has a fun beach, beach shark routine. Brogan likes to watch the crowd actually when Shannon's competing. She says they really love it, they get into it. Shannon's able to just really show it off and have fun with it. Lots 
lots of height on that double back. Controls the landing really well. It's really easy when you have high double backs like that to over rotate them. She does a great job knowing exactly where that floor is. music to set the mood. Really fun routine. This is why I was talking about the difference between elite routines versus the college atmosphere. It's all about just having fun, performing, showing off all the work you've put in all those years to get where you, to get where they are today. Shannon Hortman. Such a great set. Greeted by all of her teammates on the floor. Fabulous routine. She's going to be something special for BYU. I'm excited to see her the next four years for sure. The fact that she's doing this well in her very first home meet as a freshman. So many good things to come from Shannon. BYU chance erupt after Hortman excites the crowd. Stover 9.85. And here we see Kari Lee. Kari Lee doesn't have the difficulty that we've seen from some of her teammates. A lot of her teammates are doing the three skill series and the two blind landings, but everything that Kari does is near perfect. That's why even though you might be like, where are all the skills? All the skills she's doing are very difficult and they're all done perfectly. That's why she's so far back in the lineup. You can see what I'm talking about, very smooth. She's not going to give any deductions away. Missed most of last season. That Achilles tear. And it looks just fine right there. Yeah, very, those round off dismounts, they're very powerful. They're intense dismounts. And she goes very aggressively for it. It's very hard coming off an injury. Um, it gets in your head a little bit sometimes. You don't want to get re hurt. So the fact that she can just come back so aggressive in everything she's done tonight shows that she really has put the time in in rehab and is just feeling great. I look forward to seeing her all season. We'll be receiving a nice that embrace from the Coach Marsden. Shannon Horton with 9.75. And she shows improvement from week to week in that event. Here is Mackenzie Douglas. Mackenzie has one of the biggest full-ins I have ever seen. It is just huge. This is actually Coach Brovin again, as we mentioned, redid all the routines this year. This is Mackenzie's first new routine in eight years. She was really excited to get it. She loves Disneyland, uh, going to Disneyland with her family, and Brogan just wanted to feed off that love. So we see that she gets to do Pirates of the Caribbean tonight. she does is just huge and controlled and her leaps look great here's that full win that we talked about it is just sky high 
one more look at the like we talked about on vault, you want to finish that twist really early so you have time to see the landing. And she can see it for almost a full second before she lands. The amplitude, the levitation, whatever you want to call it, it's impressive. Kari Lee backs up Stover's 985 with a 985 of her own. And another improvement for Utah from one week to the next on the beam. Bailey Rowe, the final competitor on the balance beam for Utah. The Red Rocks, regardless of what Rowe scores here, already at a 49.1 guarantee. And it's such a great feeling when you are up sixth and you know you can just go big because you already have five safe scores to fall back on. Triple Acro Series. Bailey has some really pretty connections. She has that Triple Acro Series. She does a turn connection that is unusual. She has the turn on the one foot followed by the turn on the other foot. Most gymnasts don't. They just turn on the one foot and that's it. Unlike in dance where you have to learn everything both ways, gymnasts tend to only do things to the left or right. A little moonwalk action. The crowd always, these Utes fans, they know to expect her Michael Jackson section on beam. Bailey Rowe. 2016 Pac-12 Beam Champion. The Utes are going to put up a huge score in the Marriott Center tonight. Really great dismount here. You'll see it's incredible that these girls can do these round off dismounts. That beam really is so skinny and you have to go so aggressively for those. It shows a lot of confidence on their part to be able to do that. 9775 for Mackenzie Douglas. Erin Hilton making her debut on the floor this season for BYU. Erin has made substantial upgrades to not only her opening pass, but all three of her passes this year. She's worked really hard to earn that spot in lineup. Ooh, did she step out? I couldn't quite tell. Regardless, there were a few steps there that is going to be a pretty large deduction on that. And a lot of that honestly just comes from a little bit of inexperience. This is her first, nice. This is her first time competing on the floor. A little later in the season, she'll learn to just take one large step and just hold it. really hard in practice to compete mentally so that she can compete the way she practices. She was getting into meet situations and going a little too hard, a little too aggressive. She's really focusing on keywords like be patient, standing tall in your front tumbling, those kind of things. Final pass for Hilton. Hilton, greeted by her team. We'll take another look at a few of these passes. We'll Let's take see. a look to see, like, did she? Oh <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> she's, that is she's tiptoeing. such good awareness. <laughs> Keep that foot high. And then the final pass. I'm so impressed that she did not put her heel down. Yeah, that's about as close as you can get. Exhibition routine for Missy Ryan Statler of Utah on Beam. Obviously, this will not count towards the Utes score, and it is very impressive again on Beam. 
with a 49.2. Great score. To have 49s on all four events is just great for any team. The Utes trying to the best their season opening score of 196.625. It appears they will do that. And not by a little bit. Currently have them unofficially at a 196.9. Great score, especially considering it's only their second meet. They're just going to build on that all season long. Ideally, right? Wouldn't that be great if we could just depend on that happening for all the teams? That doesn't happen. What? <laughs> <laughs> that skill's a little different than the other side aerials we've seen. That one's actually called a side summy. The side aerial starts forward and ends forward, well, backward on the beam. The side summy starts forward like an aerial and then lands sideways. It's a little more difficult. Ryan Statler's dismount. We'll have one more exhibition on the floor and that will take care of the home opening meet for BYU Women's Gymnastics in 2017. Kylie Greenleaf. You see, she got out there on the floor and then they actually played different music. Um, it's not uncommon for that to happen, to be honest. It does mess with your head just a little bit or if you miss your intro. Greenleaf, Redshirt Junior. Washington State lining up for her first pass in this exhibition floor routine. She stepped out a little bit. Um, that is one tenth off. It's just solid one tenth. There's no, it's just a flat deduction. A lot of times in gymnastics, depending on how big of a step you take, how bent your knees are, it's a sliding scale. And on floor, if you step out of bounds, it's just flat one tenth per foot. Second pass now for Greenleaf. Your teams look so good. Brogan did such a great job choreographing them to each individual girl, really showing off their strengths. They're a lot of fun to watch. You'll see this man in the corner holding the flag. Those are called the line judges. Their job is to hold up that flag if a girl steps out of bounds. It's so that the judges can be a little more, um, they can still watch the skills happening without having to figure out if they touch the white or not. Plenty of energy in that routine. Phantom of the Opera music. Kylie Greenleaf on that first pass. And we'll take a look and see if she indeed did step out. And yet the foot clearly over the line, flat goes up. She probably honestly has never worried about going out of bounds. She, most girls do a round off back handspring double back. She does the round off double back. It's just a personal preference type thing. Makes the pass a little bit shorter. That's something that she'll be aware of in practices going forward, I'm sure. Finalizing the official scores here after the four rotations. And while we have a moment, a reminder to check out BYU Sports Nation weekdays, noon Eastern on BYU TV. Listen on BYU Radio, your day-to-day play-by-play on Cougar Sports from Studio B. Join myself and Jerem Jordan for the national simulcast. Download the podcast on iTunes. Check out the TuneIn app. And you can check out our new IMDB page. That's not, that's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was when I first heard about it. Utah with a 49.2 on beam, as I mentioned. So that score has gone official, and it will take the Utes to a meet score of 196.9. Well over their 196.625 from a week ago on their home floor against Michigan. BYU. Puts up a 48.625. Hilton's 9675 is dropped. Solid scores for those newly done routines on the floor that you mentioned. And BYU with a 194.125. So 
a small step back after their opening score of a 194.225. You know, for being as early on in the season, that's still not a bad score, and they can just build from there. Good start for a building program from the 21st ranked Cougars. Utah, as advertised, our performance of the meet. Brought to you by Dexter and Dexter, shouldering people's burdens. As passionate about shouldering people's burdens, I should say, as it is about BYU, Dexter and Dexter helps you when you need it most. Michaela Skinner on the floor, a 995. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. That, I still can't get over that she ends with the full in. So good. I mean, incredible stuff from the freshman. Sire competing at nationals. Team USA alternate and now on one of the premier programs at the NCAA level. Her all around 39.6, which is a little bit better than she put up last week when she won the all around in the head to head with Michigan of a 39.55. Improvement all around for Utah. Final tallies here once again the Red Rocks win the head to head in the annual Deseret dual meet 196.9 to BYU's 194.125. It's been great to have you with us for this home opener of gymnastics on BYU TV. And to appreciate once again all of the hard work that goes into such a taxing and enjoyable sport to watch. Appreciation to all the Utes and Cougars tuning in nationwide watching this gymnastics meet. For our next broadcast, Women's basketball, BYU will host San Diego tomorrow at 2 Eastern, noon Mountain Time. For Mikkel Merkley, our entire fantastic crew who worked hard all night, I am Spencer Linton saying good night from Pro Bowl. We'll see you next time. This is a test, testing what you know about the Ford store in Spanish Fork, just off exit 260. Question one, how many miles south of Provo is the Ford store in Spanish Fork?